Hello everybody, um, I'm going to go over some basic fitness tips to stay fit and cool and healthy the summer season. First things first, nutritional basics. Um, healthy eating is, is a staple to any fitness program. 80% of your results are built in the kitchen, and I would say that few, uh, food is the fuel that allows you to reach your goals and progress, but without proper nutrition, through quality foods, you're likely to hit a plateau and, and decrease your results. Um, so I would opt for you to choose organic whenever possible if you can afford it, and also eat a healthy diet at least Monday through Friday, and you know, enjoy your day after that of normal food or a normal meal on the weekend to stay human and, and balance. And uh, you'll skyrocket your metabolism by doing those Monday through Friday low carb days and then a, a high carb day one day after and then back to the diet. Um, also, you can uh, always maintain a well balance of the following uh, fruits, complex carbohydrates, vegetables, complete proteins, and good fats, including fish oils, flaxseed oils, coconut oils, grass fed butter, chia seeds, and hemp seeds. Um, prepare ahead. In life, you have to have a game plan for everything. Work, relationships, spiritual, everything, especially in dieting. Um, meal prepping is an easier way to stay accountable for yourself to eat the right foods and portions. And also make sure you don't skip any meals or eat too much and keep you on track. If you have any uh, meal prep uh, questions, feel free to ask. I'd be happy to answer them after the video. Also, eat more. Um, if you're only eating three daily meals, most of the people I deal with uh, through personal training and, and sales aren't losing weight because they don't eat enough, actually. Um, I actually recommend five to six small meals every few hours to stimulate your, your metabolism instead rather than three big meals. So imagine too many meals between your three basic meals. Um, snacking is a lot more efficient than just three big meals. Um, since you move and are less active toward the end of the day, I recommend you eat less as the day goes on. Portion control. You'll be eating more often, so paying attention to portions is very, very important. To make portion control easier, I recommend using smaller meal prep bowls, plates, and cups because studies actually show that people serve themselves 20 to 40 percent more food when they're using larger plates and they have more um, choices in front of them. So we don't want to do that. We want to meal prep and we want to plan our food ahead of time so we have no chance to screw up. Eating with a purpose. Um, always eat foods that are nutrient dense. Everything you consume should have substantial nutrient value. Today, through the magic of the internet, you want the most nutritional bang for your buck. And you can shop smart and save money, especially with us. We beat everybody's prices. Um, moving forward, everything you eat needs to serve a nutritional purpose in your body and fuel your workouts or be geared towards optimizing your body towards its fullest potential. Same goes with the supplements you consume on a daily basis. Again, you need to have a game plan for everything you do. Health, fitness, relationships, um, business, everything. All right, some quick mass building tips for the guys trying to get uh, bulked up this summer or any, any ladies trying to add some more meat to their butt or their legs. Um, so if you want to get bigger in bulk, you need to increase your calories. Uh, there's no way around it and your proteins and your fats. You can increase carbs a little bit for a less lean bulk as well. It'll be a little bit more sloppy. I would actually recommend keeping your carbs only high on your training days if that's your goal. Um, and again, this is applicable to men or women trying to put on lean mass. Um, so first I would start off by increasing your caloric intake and then your, your protein intake. I would increase your protein intake exponentially. Then when you enter the gym, focus on your form, implement rest pause, force contractions, and slow negatives on all exercises. Also perform uh, the stuff people don't like to do, the Olympic movements like clean and jerks, snatches, deadlifts, um, etc. And train with weights heavy and balls to the wall on an average of three to four times a week. Um, if you're going to be trying to build mass, I would not be going to the gym more than three or four times a week. Balls to the wall. If you're able to go five days a week, you are not lifting hard enough and you are not lifting uh, with enough intensity. There, that should be a telltale sign that you need to step up your lifting days. Um, supplementing. So, some people feel supplements can play a key role in boosting muscle gains and fat burning. Um, if you subscribe to that theory, chances are you're already taking protein supplements or meal replacements like our Aztec Whey protein that people love. But what else? Um, BCAAs are a great way to feel your workouts and muscles in an anabolic environment, which prevents muscle wasting. What this means for us, um, in an anabolic environment, uh, means more reps and stronger lifts and more lean muscle being built. Fish oil or flaxseed oil is also a staple supplement for all of my personal training clients. Um, healthy fats like fish oil and flaxseed are necessary for vitamins A, D, E, and K to absorb. Without saturated fats, those vitamins will not even absorb vitamins A, D, E, and K. And a lot of people don't know that. A lot of trainers don't know that. So here you are. You got to learn. Um, Fat-soluble vitamins it also lowers your cholesterol and increases your cardiovascularity functionality. So your heart works better, lowers your cholesterol, less plaque being built up in your arterial walls and your veins. 
Last thing, um, exhaust for endurance. So to further your endurance training, um, you need to put in total effort. Burnout sets are great. So if you're doing like three to 10 sets normally at your, at your gym on bench press or squats, I would throw in a set of 20 reps, high rep um, burnouts after and focus on your, on your form and go really, really slow and suffer. Um, the variation between doing three sets of 10 and then one set of 20 at the end burnout is going to shock your muscles and recruit both muscle fibers and the endurance muscle fibers that you're trying to recruit. Um, let's see. Okay. So ways to do this are, um, body weight and plyometric staple exercises, high intensity interval training. I do it with all my clients. I'm a huge fan. It's very efficient. Pull-ups, chin-ups, push-ups, inverted rows and squats. You want to burn calories? Do those things. You want to increase your endurance? Do those things. Um, and finally, some tips for working out in the heat. The only thing that sucks about the hot weather is, is uh, it's, it's hot and it makes us not want to work out and it makes us want to be lazy and just sit in the air all day or the pool, especially in San Diego. So, some things you can do again to make your routine chilly and, and uh, manageable. So, um, if you're going to work out outside, adjust your body temperature. Hop into a cold shower before your workout. Um, there's a German study this year that found a pre-exercise cool down improves performance in the heat probably because it lowers your heart rate as well as the core and skin temperatures. If you're too chicken to try it, um, even just cooling your neck or head with an ice pack makes a huge difference. Personally, um, what I do is after I exercise every time in the gym, I also re recommend this to my clients, I will have them do uh, sauna for 15 minutes and do extreme stretching, and then I'll have them rinse off real quick because if you, a lot of people don't know this, but if you do the sauna, and you just go and you don't shower afterwards, your skin is very porous. And when we go in the sauna, we're excreting toxins. One of the ways we excrete toxins is through our excretory system. Our skin is part of that. So if you go in the sauna and you sweat all these toxins, if you, if you just go home and you don't shower for hours or a day, your skin is very porous like a sponge, like SpongeBob. Imagine you're going to reabsorb all those toxins you sweat out right back into your bloodstream. So always wash off after the sauna real quick. Most gyms have outdoor showers. Uh, I would just rinse off real quick, get the nasty stuff on you, and then I recommend going in the spa. So what I usually do is sauna, rinse off uh, 15 minutes, and then I'll go in the spa and I'll pound out all my muscles on the jets, stretch out the muscle fascia, um, break up the lactic acid, and increase my nutrient transport and uh, BCAA movement. Um, and then I do the, so I go from sauna to rinse off to spa to pool. I jump at the cold water after. Heat is a vasoconstrictor. When you go in the sauna, it opens up your vascular system. Uh, good stuff and bad stuff starts traveling through your bloodstream and you start excreting waste through your excretory system, through your lungs and breathing, through your skin, um, the other pee and poop, we do that after. Um, other than that, I like to finish with a cold bath or jump in the ice cold pool after, after I've been ex exposed to extremely hot temperatures and I shock the hell out of my body and what it does is... Um, you create your cold shock proteins, which increases your norepinephrine and everything else, your focus and alertness, also your recovery. So my, my theory is you go in the sauna, you open up your veins and your nutrient transport and your amino acids and your protein, everything goes and, and goes to all your muscles and your brain and your organs. And then um, your veins are flying, they're open. When you go in the cold, it's a vasoconstrictor, so it just shuts all those nutrients in and juices the hell out of your muscles, increases your recovery time, increases your fat burning and everything else. If you're going to exercise outside, um, check the map if you're going running or hiking. 